Today we're talking about Lab Professionals Week. If you have questions, you can send them to the doctors at WLBT.com. Joining us is David Hathorn, Hathorn rather, with Baptist Medical Center, your medical technologist. Right. Tell us a little bit about Lab Week and what, it, what it's about. The profession of laboratory professionals really originated in the 1920s. And in 1975, um, National Medical Laboratory Week was organized to honor and celebrate the contributions that the medical technologists and clinical laboratory folks make to the field of medicine. Today we've got a little over 300,000 folks who are in this organization throughout the country. It's quite a few of us. Now when I'm thinking about a lab technician, I'm thinking about the person that either takes or reads my blood or urine samples. Right. But there's a lot more to that. There's what a lot else more do you to do? that. Uh, what we're doing uh, in the lab now is that we are responsible for the testing. Um, we're also responsible for collecting the blood. And, you know, most people don't like to have a vena puncture to have blood mm -hmm. drawn. It's, it's just, people just don't like to have that done commonly, but we have to do that to have a quality sample to do the quality testing. Um, we have to have an extensive knowledge of the instrumentation that we're using to run these tests, as well as does this result match the patient's diagnosis? We, there's a lot more to our job than just pushing a button and getting a result. We have to correlate the instrumentation working properly with the patient diagnosis and the most important thing about that is we have to have this result accurately and we have to have it reported in a timely manner. A wrong result reported in a wrong manner is not doing the, the physician any good whatsoever. I would hope that doesn't happen very often. It does not. does not happen. And results are coming back a lot quicker than they used to. I know mm -hmm. it used to take a week or two to get right. results back. Right. I mean, how more efficient is it now than it used to be? The most common uh, profile that we run is called, a comp it's called a comprehensive metabolic profile, which consists of 14 different tests concerning uh, consisting of glucose, electrolytes, calcium, and, and several other tests. We can have that test reported in about 12 minutes from a, a, just a sample of blood. That's pretty fast. Now, you also rule out things, too. Exactly. You're, so talk about how what the doctors are, are thinking. You're kind of like the come-behind person to, right. to make sure there's no mistakes mm -hmm. as far as the diagnosis is concerned. One thing that we do commonly at Baptist, uh, especially in the ER, is the patients will come in complaining of chest pains. And the doctors will think, okay, is this person having a heart attack? Is it indigestion? Or is it something else going on? So they've got to be able to tell quickly, is this person having a heart attack? Is it something less serious or whatever? And we do something called a, a ROMI, a rule out an MI panel, which consists of a total CK, a CKMB, and a troponin. If the CKMB and troponin are elevated, that's a pretty good indication someone's having a heart attack. If it's not elevated, that's a pretty good indication that they're not having a heart attack. So that helps the doctors right there just to determine, is this person having simply indigestion and can go home, or do they have to go be admitted for work of cardiac profile? You know, a lot of the crime shows of late have really gotten young people excited about the field of, of criminology and right. stuff like that. Have you, are you running across those kids any? We do a few. Uh, we don't do a lot of the forensic stuff at Baptist. What we're doing mainly there is medical. Uh, that would be at the state crime lab where they would do a lot of that testing. But So they're really not as interested in the regular medical as they are the... Some of them are. Some of them are very interested in that, in what we're doing. Uh, one thing that, that really hit home with me, I was doing some research about this this week and found out that there's one statistic that I think that's, that hits home with this what we're doing. 70% of the information that the doctors are using to diagnose and treat patients comes straight from the lab results that we're providing. Mm -hmm. So we are a, a huge part of the, the overall healthcare team that the doctors are, are relying on. And I assume that you that you're like doctors and lawyers and other professions that you've got to you've got to stay up with things. I mean, a new system comes into your office and you've got to learn how to work right. it. Exactly. Uh, one thing that we're starting to do is a new test. It's called the Plax test, P-L-A-C test. We've been doing this for about three months, and this test will actually help predict a risk for a stroke or heart attack. It's something that we have not been able to do before. Wow. Is that a, like a blood test? It is a blood test. Um, how, what does it take to be a technologist? I mean, do you need to be a college education? Do you need, I mean, what, how do you get jobs like this? The program, the medical technology program at Baptist is affiliated with Mississippi State University and William Carey University. What some people will do is spend three years at State or at William Carey and then spend their fourth year at Baptist training. At the end of the fourth year, they have a BS degree in medical technology. Uh, we also accept people who have a four-year degree, a BS degree, from an accredited university. And you can spend a year, the same year at Baptist training to do the same thing that the folks that go through state and carry do. Is the money pretty good for uh, kids starting out? Money's good. Okay. 
All right, David Hathorne, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. And for more new health news, rather, you can go to our website, WLBT.com, and click on Medical Matters.